Alright, so we are going to do a quick review here of Kingdom CCG and my perspective on the game. Kingdoms is a collector card game that uses characters with preset skills as a basis for the game. Characters have hit points and mana. Mana trickles in every turn to allow you to summon or cast spells at the opposition. There is a campaign mode and a PvP matchups. Of course, this is a free to play game with booster packs and starter decks available for sale. Combat is set up to allow you to a maximum of uh, three creatures and I'm gonna actually jump in really quick and, and show you one of the, the starting parts of it. Alright, so basically it's set up where there's three different lanes on each side and you only can place out the maximum of uh, three creatures. Now, um, basically when a creature attacks it it goes straight across the lane so you can't have one creature from a different lane block or, or so on and so forth um, <clears throat> creatures in these lane must defend against creatures across from them so directly across there is no choosing to allow the enemy to hit your character in order to spare the creature there are no instant spells or counter spells during the enemy's turn but you can cast a lot of um, spells or, or creatures or, or whatnot if you have a lot of mana and a lot of cards. Campaign mode runs you through a series of fights and I mean a lot of fights to generate coin and gems to spend it in the shop. It ends up being mostly coin though since gems are the more valuable side and, and they want you to buy the gems. A very appealing factor about this game is after playing it for about 24 hours not not in total but you know just roughly I played it for the last day um, I probably managed to earn about 10 booster packs if not more at first I questioned the action points that were uh, available in the campaign um, actually let me jump out of this because the only way to exit is to actually do it that way um, let me go ahead and reopen it so I can show you that portion. If it stops giving me issues here. So, basically, you have action points. Now, the most you have is 50, and then um, as you fight in the game, depending on the fight, each fight is different. Um, some will take 5 points, others 8, and so on. Now, But, you know, I started to question the whole action point thing um, in the campaign, but I believe that there is m that it is there to get people to kind of surface out of the campaign and fight other players, or even take a bit of a break from the game. But you rarely run out of action points unless you really start to lose. Um, you actually can get quite a bit of play before you actually really run out of action points. Um, every two minutes, you get more action points to, to compensate for this. Um, the need for action points. Now, campaign challenges, in some cases, are better left for later. Uh, they are a bit too strong for someone just starting out because there, there are a lot of um, um, bonuses for the enemy. In one case, like the enemy had like 10 more hit points than me, and he has some strange ability to where he actually can hurt my creatures, and I had no idea what it was because it didn't really say. Um, and he played an armor deck, which is armor is pretty strong because it negates at least one point, and um, so it basically weakens your creature um, because the opposing uh, creatures have armor to stop uh, your damage. But anyways, um, 
like game chat actually confirmed the fact that in most cases people came back to the challenges later when they had uh, more cards to, to play with as far as like they had more cards to make a better deck um, during the campaign you can actually um, earn cards as well I think this probably is one of the better collector card games that I have run into online that has a free-to-play model but then I discovered discovered a, a flaw a pretty big flaw a flaw that could actually ruin the game but only if people exploit it unlimited gear items creatures have a limit of three creatures but gear has nothing no limit whatsoever I fought against someone that had eight of the exact same gear items because they were they had a character that could actually duplicate the item I don't know if there's a cap in the deck but the person was duplicating the item um, with a certain character that was one of their skills um, it was pretty crazy uh, the skills in the game uh, for there's usually three skills per character and they cycle through so many turns each one has different sets of uh, uh, numbers of turns it looks like maybe like a little bit off but usually it takes a, like about four turns to get your skill to refresh um, there's other cards that allow you to refresh those skills uh, a bit quicker but these don't take skills don't take any mana whatsoever and um, it basically allows you to in some cases do a t direct attacks upon your opponent or upon his creatures in other cases it allows you to heal your creatures um, it just depends on the character and, and what character you end up choosing um, they each have their own skills but overall the game feels entertaining and is in the right place when it comes to its appeal I would give this game an 8 out of 10 but this game gets a 7 out of 10 because of the broken gear mechanics and some other very minor issues with the game so the final rating is 7 out of 10